The Dutch relationship with acquiring capital ships is almost as fraught as that of the Greeks. There had been plans to acquire some form of capital ship in the early 1910s, but this had been derailed by World War I. Unknown to the Dutch Navy at the time, it would turn out that picking 1938 to start looking into new plans for capital ships to defend the Dutch Empire was also not the most auspicious of timings. But, obviously unaware of what was about to occur, over 1938 and 1939, a plan was developed to construct two or possibly three new capital ships. These were not intended primarily as a hard counter to aggression, for the nations with a potential interest in the Dutch holdings and the ability to send a fleet there also possessed capital ship forces far in excess of this. Instead, the idea was a smaller version of von Tirpitz's risk fleet strategy. The most likely enemy, Japan, could easily overrun the available Dutch forces with a couple of cruiser squadrons and their support units. But a couple of actual capital ships would mean they would have to commit substantial assets, either a good portion of the Kido Butai or a squadron of capital ships of their own, maybe both. And with anything from a third to half of the operational Imperial Japanese Navy needed to guarantee a victory in a war that, due to needing to go via the Philippines to reach the Dutch East Indies, would also involve at least the USA, it suddenly made the Dutch holdings a massively less attractive target, since the last thing the Japanese Navy could afford was to secure a costly victory against the Dutch, only to have the rest of their fleet promptly mauled by the US Navy leaving them with a handful of ships that almost anyone with a major interest in the region, British, American or French, would be able to roll up almost at will. The various specifications drawn up in early 1939 thus called for a ship fitted with three triple 11-inch turrets, in a fairly standard two superfiring forward and one aft configuration. A dual-purpose secondary battery of eight 4.7-inch guns and 14 anti-aircraft 40mm cannons in twin mounts. No torpedoes would be carried, but four aircraft would be, including a pair of fighters. Speed would be high at 32 to 33 knots, and an armour belt of around 10 inches would provide protection against cruisers and longer range fire from smaller capital ship weapons such as the Japanese 14-inch gun, with a distributed armour scheme having thinner fore and aft belts. Displacement would be around 26 to 27,000 tonnes under standard conditions, and if all of this sounds like a battlecruiser variant of the Scharnhorst class, well, that isn't pure coincidence, as that particular vessel, although much more heavily armoured, albeit with a less efficient split secondary battery, was quite the talk of late 1930s smaller navies. Indeed, after some brief thoughts about asking the French for help, the Dutch instead asked Germany for a deal. Complete access to the Scharnhorst class plans in exchange for ordering the big items, such as armour and main battery, from German companies. The Germans were interested, but they weren't prepared to hand over their own designs for what was still a speculative project to a country that might then instead leverage those designs elsewhere. But they did send a revised design over along with their own thoughts, which was a broadly similar ship with somewhat more range, but slightly less armour. A series of considered design revisions were now undertaken, which resulted in a number of changes including the ramping up of engine power by degrees until a predicted speed of just under 35 knots was calculated, which would have made them the fastest capital ships ever built, or seriously planned. The design also acquired another pair of 4.7 inch twin turrets and 10 twin mounts for heavy machine guns, all of this push pushing displacement up to around 33,000 tonnes. There was now a brief diversion to consider a much smaller and slower ship, which was effectively a 16,000 ton heavy cruiser that could best be likened to a slightly better protected Wichita, except with 9.4 inch guns instead of 8 inch weapons. But the delays inherent to this, and a recognition that there would be a number of ships that could both outrun and outgun such a vessel, plus the fact that it lacked the superiority to overcome a pack of treaty-era heavy cruisers, led to the rather rapid dropping of this idea. Instead, the battlecruiser plan progressed along two lines. A Dutch design using license-built Yarrow boilers, which took up more space but would be easier to maintain, and one that used a lot of German suggestions at a more compact but harder to maintain German power plant instead. It was anticipated that three ships would be laid down in 1940 and brought into the fleet in 1944. 
slight variations in hull form and size were considered, with a mid-range option eventually arrived at that gave a ship that was about 235 metres long, 30 metres wide and just under 8 metres deep. Displacement had been pared back somewhat to just under 31,000 tonnes normal load, and speed was down fractionally at 34 knots, with the ship's main armour reduced to just under 9 inches, but inclined at 15 degrees to partially compensate, especially at long range. The anti-aircraft battery had also been uprated, now standing at 12 4.7 inch guns in twin turrets, 16 40 mm guns in twin mounts, and a number of lighter weapons, capped off by 8 single 20 mm cannon. Partially, this was paid for by dropping the fighters and leaving the ship with only two scout aircraft. There were however concerns as to if the magazines were sufficiently well protected, and this was marked down as something for further consideration. Also of interest was a series of tank trials done with models that indicated a bulbous bow design was to be preferred, allowing for more efficiency at high speeds. This would all lead to one final revised design, which was just a fraction longer, and dropped the aircraft entirely, as well as dropping the range back to 4,500 nautical miles at a relatively high cruising speed of 20 knots. This design was still under a small amount of revision even as the ideal order date rapidly approached in the spring of 1940, with some question as to whether to mount the inclined belt internally or externally. A visit to the Vittorio Veneto also led to a reworking of the internal subdivision of the ship, but at this point their erstwhile design assistants, the Germans, showed up on the border and they weren't stopping, bringing a rather abrupt end to what was quite possibly the last true battlecruiser ever designed. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.